So recently I held a poll on my Facebook fan page asking everyone which of the brand new Prime Deluxes do you want to see reviewed first? And by an overwhelming margin, Rumble wins. If you missed out on the poll, you can check the links below in the description for the fan page, and maybe next time this unusual event of me actually getting brand new toys will uh, come up with a similar poll that you will be able to participate in. I do things over there. You, you know, it might be good to pay attention. But enough cheap shilling, let's get to the toy itself, and as you can see, there is no doubt this rumble is blue. And really, that's all he is, is blue. It, it's, I don't know, I mean, this is, don't get me wrong, it's a nice blue, it's a nice aqua blue. But aside from the windshields, that's all it is. I mean, you've got the black wheels, of course, you've got black on the grill, as well as on the headlights for some reason. I don't think that's going to help visibility. You've got the bumper that's done in uh, gunmetal gray. And aside from the two Decepticon logos you're going to find, which I'm glad for once a Prime toy remember to put those on, you really don't have a lot going on. I mean, it's a, an extremely simple deco for this little two-door uh, com compact car. That's really unfortunate, because the Prime line lately has seemed to really enjoy just throwing on lots of extra details and paint all over. Now, there are some nice details. All, you know, you've got uh, the license plate and the taillights molded in. Door handles are molded in. And you've got the air intakes on the hood. And even the windshield wipers are molded in. But I keep thinking back to uh, Prime Hotspot, or Hot Shot, rather. It's the blue making me think Hotspot. Um, I'm thinking back to Hot Shot and Knockout especially, where they were given a lot of extra deco that you wouldn't have expected out of them, especially, you know, especially Knockout, since it's not in the show. But it livened up the otherwise bland vehicle mode colors. Here, this is kind of a dull car. I mean, I know there's fans of cars like this, but I don't know. This seems to be something an Autobot would be driving around in, not a Decepticon. I, I really wish they had gone all out and given him some really crazy, you know, you know, you know, you know Tokyo Drift colors. Oh, well. Can't add of everything. At least I like the red windshields. The nice thing about that is it kind of reminds me of the way they used to do things in Cybertron. Don't care if it makes it look realistic or not. We want colored windshields. So that's at least something to break up a lot, a lot of the blue, actually. Now, to liven them up a little bit, you do have his weapons, which can mount on the sides, forming enormous cannons, which really do look good. I mean... The, I was going to flip them around to show you that, hey, they, they can be thrusters too, but they do a pretty good job of that all on their own, don't they? Not much to look at from behind, but on the side, very nice. A lot of detail molded in on those. You can see the wings on the edges, and in the front, four barrels. Very nice. These are not kidding around. The only downside is on the box art and the photos, you can see these are supposed to be painted blue here on the back, which really would have livened them up a little bit. So, that's unfortunate. A lot of little shortcuts in the colors and vehicle mode. I still like it for what it is. So, how about we take this into robot mode? And since this is a completely new toy, yes, I will do something rare for my videos and demonstrate the transformation. Transformation is really the only part of this toy that reminds me of the Prime line, the way it handles its vehicle mode kibble folding it together to create the various body parts, in the legs especially. Though, that's a little unfair because it actually kind of handles its kibble in a more old school way, the biggest bulks hanging off of his shoulders, which in this case isn't such a big problem. You do have a few traits from the Prime line, like the flip out head, but otherwise the aesthetic of how the transformation works really reminds me of some of the past toy lines we've had. In robot mode, Rumble is kind of a squat little guy. I'll give you a quick comparison here to Prime Ratchet, who's of average height, and you can see quite a pitch shorter. That's probably because he doesn't use his kibble the way most Prime toys do. Instead of folding it into the robot mode, making up its arms or limbs or anything like that, it's all hanging off of his shoulders like this. 
As I mentioned, this isn't necessarily a bad thing as it does give him a unique look for the toy line and it does kind of play into his, well, I guess you could call it his gimmick or at least his theme. Let's, that's a better term for it. Now, detail-wise, I am digging this chest. This is like some crazy face chest. I love it. It's the kind of thing that makes me really want this to get repainted into something, you know, just kind of sinister, evil looking. Like, this should be a skull the next time they repaint this. It just looks really menacing. You can see translucent red in the chest. I don't know why they gave him red boobs. They just did. It gives him this, like, little demonic red-eyed face. Just like, that's... Yeah. You see that black smile and the deep red eyes? Have fun seeing that in your nightmares tonight. And yes, he has a little fire red goatee, I guess. But I do I do like the design. I do like the chest. And I will show you the head here as well. Very dark head. I mean, you got the translucent red, which if there's a light behind it, you'll be able to see easier. But gunmetal gray painted on the face really keeps you from seeing a lot of the details from afar. It just looks like a straight up black head, which is kind of unfortunate. I do like the collar though. That's a unique touch. And you can see they put in yellow to break up all the blue here and there in the knees, especially in the shoulders. The legs are pretty much the only thing made up of car mode detail, which you can see the hood intakes right there. The feet, very pointed. Not such a big deal there. And I'll show you the arms too. Not, not much to speak of, but I do want to get all the detail in there. It does have the fanned out fingers and open hand that has become typical in toy lines now. One of the molded details I do like is in the vehicle mode kibble here, where you can see guns over his shoulders, a la the G1 rumble. Oh, that's a nice little touch. I really wish... Okay. <sighs> oh, I was going to ask Takara, can you please paint these so they stand out a lot better, but with them being all nuts on stickers... Their version will probably have even less paint than this, so maybe not. Something a customizer would do in a heartbeat, though. So you can see tons of detail. I do really like the detail and look of this. The aesthetic reminds me of a Cybertron toy. And if, if you've watched this channel long enough, you know that's my favorite Transformer line. So I do dig how he looks. Articulation-wise... Knees are a little weird because it's kind of how the transformation works. But, huge range in the knee as a result, so that's a nice thing. You've got the hip rotation here, as well as ball joints in the hips. The neck is ball jointed, though it's on translucent plastic, which makes me worry about the long-term life of this toy. I hate when they do that. Bicep swivel all the way around. The elbows, uh, they have that little uh, fakey ratcheted effect, so they can stand up to a lot of uh, heavy lifting poses. Just in case you get crazy uh, arms micron weapon ideas for them. The, where the articulation kind of fails me is unfortunately the shoulders. While you have all the forward mo motion you want, that kibble really does restrict some of the poses you'd want. You need to make sure the shoulders clear it in order to actually get them out and to do anything. And then it blocks it the other way so you can't get it forward. So unfortunately, the shoulders are restricted to 90 degree angles when posing. And that really bugs me. The shoulders are so huge. I mean, you'd, you'd think they get huge amounts of posing out of this. But unfortunately not. Really upsetting. I was really hoping for some great shoulder articulation for his pile driver poses. And that's unfortunately not happening here. He has a ball joint in his waist as well, oddly enough, but because of the way the toy works, there's really not much you can do with it. I mean, it, it just doesn't go far enough. I'm not sure why they put a ball joint there, because it's completely inefficient. So, anyway, besides some limited articulation, it works perfectly fine. But, what we're here to see are the pile drivers, which fit very well into his arms. And you can see, since these handles have a lot of clear space, there you can recess the arms all the way into them, 
making them look like a complete part of the arm. I love how well that blends in, though this is where that missing blue paint we were supposed to get would have made it blend a lot better. But we can see Rumble in his full pile driver mode. Very fierce, very menacing. They do look really, really good this way. And this is where some of those manic shoulder poses would have been really nice, though you can still get a lot out of it. And still make him look very fierce. One thing I do like is you can actually get some really good poses like he's about to pound. So even though his shoulders are very much restricted, there's still quite a bit they can do. And essentially, the poses I would want him to be able to put on, he can. So at least the shoulders aren't that bad in that regard. As you can see, still gun. You, you could pretend they're guns too. Lots to, you know, it's your imagination. Use it. Have fun. It's a toy. Do whatever you want. And I think that's a good place to leave off. Overall, I'm really enjoying Rumble as a toy. As I said before, he reminds me of toys we would get in the mid-2000s, you know, with his aesthetic and his functionality. And especially the way he's built, having arms that aren't made up of panels, which is an annoyance for me with the Transformers Prime line. Those hoping for some really good arm poses out of him are going to be disappointed by the shoulder kibble which unfortunately there isn't any real way of dealing with because of the way they hinge around to transform. But if you can work around that, or if that's not such a big bother for you, this is an A-plus toy, and definitely worth picking up if you can find him. And yes, I will be reviewing Cup at some point if I can get the time to do it. Because you know what? As much as I like Rumble here, I think I like Cup a lot more.